In this video we're going to replace the Novo XT massage mechanism. The first step is to remove both side panels. To do that, use an Allen wrench to remove the bolt on the inside of the front of the armrest. Then pull the armrest up, forward, and out to remove it. Disconnect the hoses. Next we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the backrest cover. So there are six screws. The next step is to remove this upholstered collar here that is held in place by two screws up underneath there. You can see here's one screw and the other one's in the same location on the other side. So use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove those two screws and the collar will detach from the chair. So locate the zipper tab behind the backrest pad that secures the backrest pad to the upholstered collar and open that zipper but make sure you hang on to the upholstered collar because once you open the zipper the collar will fall off. Then behind 
the collar there um, disconnect the speaker wires on each side and you can remove the collar from the chair The next step then is to remove uh, six screws that secure the backrest structure to the chair frame using a Phillips head screwdriver. The first two are on the back, as you can see. And those, those screws are shorter than the other ones, so make sure you take a note of that. And then on each side there are two longer screws. And the same on the other side. The next step then is to remove the massage mechanism strap bracket, which requires again a Phillips head screwdriver. Push the backrest structure forward and you'll find the plastic bracket with two screws securing the massage mechanism strap to the backrest. Remove those two screws. The next step is to get an object such as a 2x4, um, some, anything two feet long or so, um, that we need to insert between the chair frame and the backrest structure to provide us room to work. So once you've found that object, push the backrest structure forward and, and prop it forward out of your way with an object such as the foam piece shown or, or anything else that will hold it forward out of your way. Next we're going to use the Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four screws that secure the frame cross member. Two screws on each end. And again, make, keep these screws separate and make note of where they go for, uh, so you can keep the screws straight during reassembly. Next we're going to begin disconnecting the various connectors. Um, but before we get started, it's really important to take a picture or, or something because you'll need to have very careful reference when installing the new mechanism. Uh, these connectors and zip ties need to be replaced exactly where they are now. So we'll cut the two main zip ties that secure the connector bank, which frees up, looks like four sets of connectors, which we can then Continue cutting zip ties to free those connectors. You'll notice when you're clipping zip ties that there are two special zip ties located here and here. Um, after cutting those zip ties, you can pull those out of the bracket because you need to free up those holes. Um, when reassembling the new mechanism, you will not have that special kind of zip tie, but we will uh, use the holes in the bracket to secure it using new zip ties. So go ahead and pry those two special zip ties out of the holes. Okay, and you can discard those. And next we're ready to begin actually disconnecting the connectors. We need to disconnect all the connectors that come from the main cable harness. 
Um, so you'll cut, this, each connector is secured by a zip tie, which you can cut. And then you can disconnect the connectors. Then there's another connector that's connected up to this board. You'll need to remove some glue that's securing that connector to the board before you can disconnect that connector from the board. And then finally we have the ground wire, which is connected using a Phillips head screw to that bracket. So you may want to insert that ground wire screw back into the bracket so to keep track of where that screw goes. So we're getting close to having this main cable harness freed. It's secured up under the motors there using a couple of zip ties. So you'll need to cut those zip ties, being careful not to cut the harness. Those two zip ties and then that cable harness is free. At this point, we're nearly ready to move the massage mechanism up and out of the frame. Uh, this is going to require us to insert a flathead screwdriver here and turn that to move the massage mechanism. However, it's not currently accessible because of the location of this part here. So, in order to change the angle of that motor, we need to remove the four screws that secure it to this bracket. These screws are extremely tight. And so to avoid stripping the screws, um, we suggest you use a vice grip along with the screwdriver to break the torque on those screws before attempting to remove them. Okay, now that we have those four screws removed, we can tilt that elevation motor outward to give us access to that screw, insert a flathead screwdriver and turn it clockwise, which will move, begin to manually move the mechanism up toward the top of the frame. As you can see, we're nearing the top of the track where the mechanism is about to move past the end of the track. Once the lower wheels of the mechanism have um, moved up past the end of the track, we can pull up on the massage mechanism to remove it from the chair. To install the new massage mechanism then, we're going to perform all those steps in reverse, starting with aligning the massage mechanism wheels into the track. I need a little push lowering the lower wheels down till they meet the track. Once you've placed the new massage mechanism into position, again you need to loosen up these four screws and then tilt that motor out so that you will have access to it with your flathead screwdriver in order to manually move the massage mechanism down the track. And then taking our flathead screwdriver and turning that elevation motor counterclockwise this time to move the mechanism downward in the track. So the way you'll know when you've lowered the mechanism sufficiently is when the magnet on the massage mechanism 
is below the sensor board. So we still have a ways to go. And so now we can see that magnet below the sensor board, and that's as far as we need to go. The next step is to secure the elevation motor to the bracket next to it. First, we need to push it inward up against the bracket. Remember, we had pulled it out in order to insert the screwdriver to, to move the mechanism. And then to replace the four screws that secure the motor to the bracket. Make sure those screws are nice and tight. And again, you can use that vice grip along with the screwdriver for extra torque. The next step is to begin securing the cable harness to the massage mechanism. So the first thing we're going to do is locate the indentations. There's two indentations in the harness where the previous zip ties were secured. It's important that we install the new zip ties in the same location. So on the right hand most indentation, run a zip tie through the loop on the bottom of the right hand motor and loosely secure the cable harness in that location. You may need to adjust it later so don't secure it all the way. And then for the left hand cable harness the indentation, we're going to secure it to a hole in the frame that's located just a bit to the left of where you secured the other one. And we'll take a look at where that hole is on the frame from the back side. It's the leftmost hole in the frame, looking at it from the back side. So once those two zip ties are in place, we're ready to start reconnecting connectors. So the connectors coming from the motors are unfortunately all contain the same colored connector. So um, we're, we're going to refer to the motors from left to right as motors number one, two, three, four. And so looking at motor number one, the furthermost left motor connects to the yellow connector coming from the cable harness. Motor number two then from the left secures to the red connector. Motor number three secures to the blue connector. And motor number four secures to the black connector. Once all those connections are made, we can secure the final connector, which is blue, up to the little board. And then we're ready to start securing connectors to the frame. 
Before we begin positioning the connectors on the chair frame, we need to secure each connector using a new zip tie. You insert the zip tie in the obvious location, which secures each side of the connector and prevents it from becoming disconnected. Do that for each of the four connectors. and then cut the excess tie wrap off. Next, we're going to secure the ground wire to the chair frame. Hopefully you inserted the screw to keep track of it back into the frame after removing the previous ground wire. If not, locate that screw and washer. and then secure the ground wire to the leftmost hole there on that metal plate where it was in the first place. The next step is to begin installing these connectors into the frame by pushing the top part of the cable harness back as far as it will go on top of that metal plate. We'll be positioning the other connectors in front of it. Next, take a zip tie and run it through each of the th three holes in the front of that metal plate. We'll be using these to secure the other four connectors. Once the three zip ties are installed, we can begin folding the remaining connectors on top of that metal bracket. Start with the blue and black connectors, fold them in, and secure them using the rightmost zip tie. and then do the same with the red and yellow connectors. Actually, I guess you only need two zip ties. And finally, we need to secure the cable that runs to that blue connector up to the p that little board. So we will use two zip ties to do this through the two holes in the frame where you previously had those special zip ties with plugs. We remove those and since you likely don't have any of those, we'll just run a regular zip tie through the two holes in the frame to secure that cable. And cut the excess zip tie. And we have all the connectors secured. Once we're finished attaching all the connectors, kind of push on all the connectors and see if there's anything that looks like it could possibly come loose, like in that area. If uh, something looks like it could come loose, just use another zip tie or more to secure it. The idea here is simply that these connectors need to be secured so that they cannot come loose and interfere with anything. So you can see we added one more zip tie there and now everything is nice and secure and there's no way those connectors are coming loose. Good. 
So now we're ready to go back and finish the two, securing the two cable harness zip ties. You can tighten those up to 